Bandwidth for MacBreak is brought to you by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Welcome to MacBreak Studio. I'm your host, Brian Gary. I'm here with motion guru, Mark Spencer. Hey, Brian. You know, in one of our previous Mac breaks, you, you helped me out with that uh, Speed Freaks Speed problem. Speed Freaks thing, yeah. Yeah, and, and you, you came up with this thing that you just kind of glossed over a little bit called the null object that helped mm -hmm. me just salvage that really bad camera move. Could you kind of go in a little bit more? That seems like something you yeah. could use over and over again. I'll talk a little bit about more detail about uh, situations you might want to use this approach. Um, and in fact, I have here, let's just dive right in. I have a little project. This is uh, based on a project in my Motion 4 book, mm -hmm. uh, but I cover it also in my, in my Motion 4 uh, DVD and online tutorials. So we have a camera move here, and right now the active camera in this lower viewport, you can see what the camera move looks like, mm -hmm. that it's moving from one little scene of Andy Irons to this other one of, of Kelly Slater. And um, if I make the upper viewport active, we can see what the camera motion looks like. If I play it back, we'll see the camera moving from one set to the next. Right. And this, is, this movement is accomplished with the framing behavior, which I love. It's, an, it's a new feature of Motion 4 that allows the camera to precisely frame anything you tell it to frame. Uh, the only limitation is in the way that it frames that object. And to make that make a little more sense, let me switch this top view. I'm going to hit the Control P to go to a respective view. And we can see a little box around the Kelly Slater group here. So when the camera comes over here, what it does by default is it perfectly frames, uh, in this case, the group, because that's what I have dragged into this target in the heads-up display, mm -hmm. which means that the basically the focal plane of the camera touches against the boundaries of the group okay. containing those objects. You have some flexibility because this white border that has these little corner pieces, if you drag on that, you can see I'm able to um, sort of dolly the camera forward to change the framing or dolly it back. I'll undo that. Or I can, I can kind of shift the camera side to side a little bit. And in fact, if you look over in the Behaviors tab of the inspector, there are some path offset controls. And these are basically doing the same thing, but you can drag in here to change either the path of the camera on its way to that object, mm -hmm. or under the framing offset, you can change how the, f the object is being framed. Uh, which is great. I'll set those back to zero, but just as an extreme example, I could shift it off to the right like that. So I'll set those back to zero. So that's, that's great, but w the only thing you can't control is the angle. In other words, if I wanted it to frame that group but have it slightly cockeyed or dutched, mm -hmm. you know, off to the side, I really can't do that with the framing behavior. It's going to frame it straight on. I can move it back or forward or left or right, but I can't twist the camera. So what I like to do is add this, what I call null object, which is really a terminology from After Effects. Right. I'm basically using, because there, there is no null object object in motion, but you can use any, any layer as this little placeholder. So what I'm going to do... And the I'm key gonna, being visibility. That's, yeah, that's we're just going to hide it. Right. We're going to hide it. It's going to be a little hidden doodad, okay? okay. So I'm going to go, I'm going to select the Kelly Slater group, and I'm going to use a little rectangle shape. It doesn't really matter what you use, but I find the rectangle shape tool pretty... Um, flexible for this. I'm just going to draw a rectangle in the Kelly Slater group, and I've got this big white thing there. Um, but what I'm going to do is then I'm going to drag this rectangle onto the framing behavior right there. That's a shortcut instead of bringing up the heads-up display. Right. And doing for the behavior. Well. Yeah. yeah, I can just drag it right on there a little quicker. So now that camera is going to frame that rectangle instead of the um, the group that it's in. I'm going to hit Q to go to my Just 3D Transform tool, and if I move this rectangle, notice how the camera's moving, oh, okay. okay? So I'm using this as a proxy, and I'm going to turn off the visibility of the rectangle. We still have its controls. So now I can control that final framing of the camera in X here by dragging on the, the red handle, or in Y by dragging on the green handle, uh, or in Z by dragging on that blue handle, that blue arrow that's pointing right at us. Right. See, I'm changing the ending framing of the camera that way. Or, here's the cool thing that you can't do any other way, if I rotate that oh, rectangle, see how the rectangle shape is staying flat to the screen here, and the camera is rotating in order that it looks at that rectangle flat on. But it's allowing me then to change the relationship between the camera and the final group it's landing on. 
Does it need to be in the group, or is that just something you did for I just, our organization? I just put it in there for organization, okay. yeah, and I might label it so I'm clear what it does. So now if we play back, we see the camera moves from the Andy Irons group to Kelly Slater, and it's facing on an angle. And you right. can, if we go up to perspective view, see what it looks like that. I'll select the camera so we see the outline of the camera, and we see it play back. The camera now comes in and has that different orientation. Right. So that's the essence of it. You can use it in many different ways. In that previous episode, we used it as an intermediate step. Mm -hmm. with, we had a two framing behaviors. We had one that just had it go to that object. So this, the cool thing about it is it's so flexible. I can drag that thing anywhere in space, and the camera will always go to it, no matter where I put it. Right. So you know, with keyframes, you keyframe, then you have to change the keyframes. But this is now kind of linked together, and the camera's always going to be happy to follow it. I have this extra level of control uh, to precisely frame whatever I want to frame. Right. And that's, that's really the essence of the, of the approach. Well, you know what I, what I like about that is that y even though you can hide it, you still have that kind of visual representation, and it really does feel like you're controlling the camera. It does. At that point. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You know. and, and from its focal plane. So rather than the camera turning like this, mm -hmm. it's stuck to that thing. So it's still going to look at it no matter how it turns. So right, it stays right. focused where you want it to. It's kind of like those rigs that attach to people's bodies. So as yeah, they're yeah, yeah, moving, yeah. You know, the camera is just kind of stuck in that face. Yep. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Well, Mark, thank you very much. Um, where can I learn more tips and tricks for motion? You know. Do, I was just being <laughs> cheeky. <laughs> All right. <laughs> One more time for those who don't yes. know, who might be new to MacBreak Studio. RippleTraining.com is where we have tutorials on all the Final Cut Studio applications. Yes. That's right. Uh, and related applications that work with Final Cut Studio. And you got that website. What do you do on that, that website? Apple sure, I have, a, I have a website, applemotion.net, mm -hmm. where um, it's basically my, my blog. It's just information specific. It's all motion and only motion. You're musing on been, motion? Well, I don't do too much of that. It's more like <laughs> links to resources on okay. motion. Free tutorials, free information, uh, books, other paid tutorials, just anything about motion. I've been keeping since motion launched like five years ago. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, again, uh, rippletraining.com for more specific tutorials, applemotion.net to be part of Mark's universe. Thank you, Mark, for coming in. Thank you very much, Brian. And I've been your host today, Brian Gary. Thanks for watching.